It's the Emma Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world. Hello, and welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. Before we begin, I would like to thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. This episode is brought to you by BookBannersEtc.com and Willow Kestrel Jewelry. If you enjoy the show and would like to become a sponsor, you can contact me directly at emmett.blackwell at gmail.com. On this episode, I have a wild card, Twitter personality, and smule singer, Susie Cusey. Susie has performed hundreds of songs with the use of a karaoke-style app called Smule. She has over 22,000 followers on Twitter. Although she has what she considers a normal life, she still finds time to sing songs that you all know and love. So without any further ado, let's begin. Hi, Susie. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Emmett? I'm doing fantastic. Now, I've seen you on Twitter. I've seen you on the Smule app, okay? Now, what inspired you with the singing on Smule? And for anybody out there who hasn't heard about this Smule app, it allows you to sing songs with friends, and it's kind of like a karaoke bar and a social network all in one thing. So what inspired you, Susie, to, to start even getting into that? Um, honestly, it, it, I, I love karaoke. <laughs> um, I saw the app, I think an ad for the app in like Facebook at some point, And I was like, that looks fun. Um, and I never expected to get hooked into it. Um, I'm not, I'm not actually much of a singer. I just do it for fun. So it just, it's, it's a fun way to kill time. Yeah. Now the, the, the strange thing is, is for somebody who just kind of got hooked into it, you've got how many videos up on Smule that, that you sing on? I have no idea. <laughs> There's a lot because it's been over a long period. It's, there's thousands. But honestly, the way it does it is misleading because when you open a song, people can join you. Mm. Um, so I might sing a song once and like 60 people will join and do a duet with me. And that counts as different recordings each time. So even if it says I have like 10,000 recordings, let's say, it's probably really only like 800 times that I've recorded. It's just a lot of people have joined. Still, that that's a lot. That's quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> usually, usually yeah, at a I, karaoke I bar, they, yeah, usually at a karaoke bar, they cut you off at a certain point, but no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so now, um, when I first saw you on Twitter, you seemed intriguing and I wasn't alone. You have an amazing 22.5 thousand followers on Twitter. Do you think that the singing has helped gain some of those followers? Um, I mean, I guess maybe in some way it has. I just, it's funny because I, I started Twitter um, it's been less than a year. I think it was last March. And it was just kind of like a fun outlet. I'd actually shut off Facebook for a while. And I was like, I'll give this a shot. And I never expected that. Like I posted a video, I think, to be funny ones, but I never expected people to react the way they did. So it's been kind of, a, you know, interesting. And now people ask, like they request songs from me and they tell me they miss hearing my song. So it's it's interesting. Wow. That's quite amazing. And on your Shmuel account, I'm saying that right Smule? I think it's Smule. Okay. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll go with that. Hopefully the people over at Smule aren't like, oh, they're messing up our name. But that's okay. Um, so on your Smule account, you sing some amazing songs. I personally like the jazzy ones. That's just kind of my personality. And uh, But then again, what are some of your favorite singers? Um, I, I really have eclectic taste in music. So I listen to everything from, I mean, like I, I'm actually a classically trained pianist, so I play piano. Um, mostly classical and jazz. I love jazz. Um, and then I listen to everything from like classic rock to, you know, um, more contemporary. I love singer songwriter music though. So I love like Ingrid Michaelson, Tori Amos. Those are kind of like my go-to kind of female singer songwriter type. Um, you know, Adele has a fantastic voice. There's so many good singers. Wow. It's incredible that you're a pianist too, because I would have never guessed that. But then again, you know, you listen to your stuff and you're like, wait a second, there's something else going on there. There, She's got some talent, but not just normal talent, like talent that's taught. You know what I'm saying? Like some, you've taken classes in singing, correct? Um, I took voice lessons for a year when I was in high school. Um, maybe a couple of years, but that's about it because, um, I was never that good at singing, you know, like I, I knew that it wasn't going to be something I went far with. Hmm. It seems to me that you put a lot of emotion into your song. And you're, do you have like a life soundtrack? And if you do, what are like five songs that you would have on your life soundtrack? 
you know, I mean, that's funny that first that you say that I put a lot of emotion to it. I think that's honestly why people relate to my singing because it's, it's more accessible. It's not professional. And because you can tell that I'm feeling what I'm singing. Um, if I had to pick kind of like my, <laughs> my soundtrack, um, that's hard. <laughs> I, I guess like, um, I, a lot of my friends, I don't know if you know Ben Folds Five, but a lot of my friends when I was in high school used to say the song Kate was written about me. Um, so that's a song that I would definitely add to the list. Um, because I'm a little stubborn, maybe I'd say like a uh, little Miss Can't Be Wrong by the <laughs> Doctors. <laughs> um, I, um, you know, I think, you know, just I, I like kind of like anthem songs, like I love Brave by Sarah Bareilles, um, you know, things that are kind of like amp you up and, um, you know, I think that um, I I do that for other people. So maybe those are <laughs> um, good, you know, apropos songs uh, to be about my life. Um, let's see if I had to pick two more. Mm. <laughs> it's really difficult to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I have one, and it's like Eye of the Tiger, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a good one. Well, I just wake that's up, you, like, and that's what I'm listening yourself to. yourself running up the stairs. and <laughs> Yeah, I, I picture myself. I'm not actually doing those things, but I picture <laughs> myself doing them. Yeah, it gets me out of bed in the morning. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. I won't push too hard on the uh, the, the life soundtrack because um, – your life has not been written yet. So, oh, there you go. You only need three Yeah, songs. that's good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the other two. We'll talk in 20 years, and I'll tell you those two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you live in New York. Um, do you live in the city, or do you live, like, outside the city? Yeah, I live in New York State, so I'm I'm, I'm pretty far from New York City. I'm about a six-hour drive um, up in Rochester, and um, I lived in New York City for a short period of time, but... I have been in Rochester now for over a decade. Wow. And, you know, it's the funny thing because, like, I mean, I'm from Michigan, right? As soon as we hear the word New York, right, we don't even think yeah. about the entire gigantic <laughs> state that's associated with New York. We just think that everybody <laughs> from New York lives in the city. Like, it's just some kind of compacted area. Everything else is desolate on the outskirts. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, you have... You have a lot of fun with your Twitter followers. You joke with them about all kinds of topics, and some of those of which we can't talk about here on this podcast. Um, <laughs> you seem to be a very easygoing person. And, you know, drama, it just seems to be a gigantic thing on Twitter. What is your perspective on that Twitter drama, and, and how do you avoid it? Um, I think it, it's funny. I find it amusing that there's so much drama on Twitter. I think it's, I think people get kind of like high schoolish about it, <laughs> like they form Twitter clicks and um, you know, if you say one bad thing about one person, then you've pissed off the entire clique. I just, I don't get involved in any of that. I stay kind of on the fringe. Um, you know, I'm just there for me. And um, when there is drama, I don't take sides. I don't get involved. I don't play into it. Um, I think that I just kind of as much as possible keep away from it. Yeah, I think the only drama that I face on my page is that whenever I see like a, a tweet from like some famous person or some a uh, political candidate or something, and it just kind of like sucks away all my ratings, that's when I start to get a little bit upset. And I'm like, ah, yeah. nobody's listening to my podcast because they're watching the news. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch the news. Come on now. But anyhow, right. <laughs> that's the only time I get upset. <laughs> but I try to keep it calm because, you know, I mean, yeah. eh, it's the news. Anyhow. <laughs> I just try, I try and be nice to everybody, too. That's the other thing. You yeah. know, I just assume that. If somebody's mean, it's maybe they're having a really bad day. And so maybe I can, you know, get them out of that by just responding with something nice or funny instead of responding with anger. Yeah. And, you know, and the funny thing is you sing a song um, that is extremely positive and it's all about, you know, making people positive in your life. You're like a wild card. You're like a Twitter personality, a singer. You do all these extra things, and even though you don't want to admit that you're a singer, you're an all-around great person, all right? You're 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 amazing. Uh, you also have a normal life, which a lot of the people on Twitter do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so then how does your normal life differ from your online personality? Are, are you like the same type of person outside of the web? Um, I'm Well, first of all, I wouldn't necessarily call it a normal life. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am – I – I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, lead a, I guess, a typical, somewhat typical life. Um, I'm very similar, I guess, in terms of, 
um, personality, but I, I, you know, the types of jokes I make in my daily life are probably a bit different than those that I make on Twitter. <laughs> um, you know, those inappropriate ones you were referencing before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those ones. I, you know, I work, yeah, those ones I work. Um, I, I actually work a fairly, um, you know, high level corporate job. So I definitely don't joke like this in the office. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. So I keep that, this Twitter is kind of my outlet for that. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that. Does it kind of like give you that that it's like your online therapy session, so you can just get all this stuff out of your system? Is that is that kind of how this works yeah. on Twitter? Yeah. See, I, I think yeah. it gives me a place to be me. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Definitely. And we'll be right back after a message from our sponsor. Have you ever found yourself looking for a gift but just can't find something that's unique and different? There are many online shops to find jewelry, but most of those sites carry manufactured creations that are mass-produced. The internet is at your fingertips. You shouldn't have to travel through all the realms to get something amazing. At Willow Kestrel Jewelry, you will find handcrafted creations. Whether you are looking for a wire-wrapped pendant, natural shells, or beautiful precious gemstones, you will find it all at Willow Kestrel Jewelry Shop at Etsy.com. Willow Kessel Jewelry uses genuine gemstones, including amethyst, moonstone, citrine, rose quartz, laramar, malachite, sapphire, and many more. You can make it rain with gemstones. I know I did. And it felt like I had been transported back in time to when me and my friend had to take a ring back to a mountainous volcano and toss it in to save the world. Now you can use the coupon code BLACKWELL20, that's Blackwell, with the number 20, to save 20% at checkout. Search Willow Kessel Jewelry under Shops at Etsy.com today. In a world full of obstacles and haphazard graphics, one company has broken the mold of building amazing book covers, banners, video trailers, and more. Book Banners Etc. is your premier source for the most epic designs. Constructed from the mind of independent author Lynn Lamb, Book Banners Etc. is dedicated to making your dream a reality. They offer an array of marketing materials at affordable prices. If you're looking for book covers that pop, Banners that captivate, swag for signing, and alluring video trailers stop by www.bookbannersetc.com. That's bookbannersetc.com. Imagine your world, then make it epic with www.bookbannersetc.com. Now, we talked before, and um, when we had uh, made contact uh, a while back, I had asked you, you know, when I first saw your singing, why you had never pursued a career in singing. You have the charisma, you have the style, you have the look. Now, do you still hold firm to staying completely out of the music scene, and why? Yeah, I mean, you know, I love music. Music is a huge part of my life, Um, and uh, I definitely, I mean, it's not like I wouldn't... um, accept a life in music if the right type of thing happened. But singing is not that thing for me. I love singing. It's like one of those things that's easy and fun to do. Um, And I'm not saying that I'm not a decent singer. um, But I think when you're good enough, you also realize that you're not as good as the people who are truly great. Like that's the difference between, you know, knowing, you know, like what really good singing is. And I, I know that I can sing, but I know I'm not quite there. Um, so I really, I just do it for me and that's enough. All right. And now we've come to the point of the show where I'm going to put you through what I put everybody through. And that is a quiz. And this is going to be called guess that eighties movie quiz. All right. With each point that you get correct, you'll get 200 points. Now those points cannot be exchanged for any money. (laughs) They have zero value. And, um, really you can just say that you have them. All right. Um, you can hold them in your hands, uh, but they don't really, th- you can't see them. All right. So anyhow. Can I use them as bragging points? <laughs> yes. You can use them as bragging points. That's about the only thing. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, describe to you a movie and you have to de- tell me the title of that movie. And it's definitely an 80s movie, all very popular movies. Um, and I will give you the 200 points, each point that you get correct. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right. And I'm going to probably have to say this in my movie voice, my movie guy voice. All right. So, <laughs> so here we go. First question. 
After the members of a team of scientists lose their cushy positions at a university in New York City, they decide to start their own paranormal investigation and elimination business. They stumble upon a gateway to another dimension, a doorway that will release evil upon the city. They must now save New York from complete destruction. Ghostbusters. Yes, correct. It is Ghostbusters. All right, 200 points for you. I almost sang it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I got it in my brain. All right, so <laughs> here's the next one. After a gentle alien becomes stranded on Earth, the being is discovered and befriended by a young boy named Elliot, bringing the extraterrestrial into a suburban Californian home. Elliot introduces the creature to his brother and his little sister, Gertie and the children decide to keep its existence a secret. Soon, however, the alien falls ill, resulting in government intervention and a dire situation for both Elliot and the alien. That's E.T. Yes, correct, E.T. Well, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's two for well, two. I'm, I'm a child of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of helps, right? It's like, oh, man, I remember seeing yeah. this on TV. All right, so here we go. Here's the next one. After Barbara and Adam Maitland die in a car accident, they find themselves stuck haunting their country residence, unable to leave the house. When the unbearable Dietzes and teen daughter Lydia buy the home, the Maitlands attempt to scare them away without success. Their efforts attract a very strange bio-exorcist, a rambunctious spirit whose help quickly becomes dangerous for the Maitlands and innocent Lydia. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yes, it is. <laughs> correct. Correct. All right, here's the next one. After getting a green card in exchange for assassinating a Cuban government official, Tony Montana stakes a claim on the drug trade in Miami, viciously murdering anyone who stands in his way. Tony eventually becomes the biggest drug lord in the state, controlling nearly all the cocaine that comes through Miami. But increased pressure from the police, wars with Colombian drug cartels, and his own drug-fueled paranoia served to fuel the flames of his eventual downfall. Case. Yes, it is. Wow, you're doing amazing. <laughs> wow, good job. All right, here we go. I know my 80s movie. I know, that's definitely, and that's the one that I thought was like, mm, I don't know if she's going to get this, but you got it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's the next one. In Wes Craven's classic slasher film, several Midwestern teenagers fall prey to a disfigured midnight mangler who preys on the teenagers in their dreams, which in turn kills them in reality. After investigating the phenomenon, Nancy begins to suspect that a dark secret kept by her and her friend's parents may be the key to unraveling the mystery. But can Nancy and her boyfriend, Glenn, solve the puzzle before it's too late? Nightmare on Elm Street. Wow, good one. <laughs> you got the, I'm just kind of blown away by this. Because, uh, yeah, when I tried to do this quiz, I did horribly. Uh, like, oh, well. Really? Okay. Yeah, well, not completely bad. Maybe because maybe you're younger. <laughs> no, I'm not too much younger. I mean, I just, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I didn't get to watch Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, I just got to see it yesterday. And so, no. <laughs> and so, no. But anyhow, here we go. Here's the next one. Moving in from Chicago, newcomer Ren McCormick is in shock when he discovers a small Midwestern town he now calls home has made dancing and rock music illegal. As he struggles to fit in, Ren faces an uphill battle to change things. With the help of his new friend, Willard Hewitt, and defiant teen, Ariel Moore, he might loosen up this conservative town. But Ariel's influential father, Reverend Shaw Moore, stands in the way. At Footloose. Yes, it is Footloose. Wow, good job, man. We only got a couple more here, <laughs> and, and you're doing an excellent job. Uh, you've got like, what, uh, 1,400 points? That's good. All right, so here we At go. <laughs> here we go. Two high school buddies start a band. However, they are about to fail their history class, which means for one of them, it would send them to military school. They receive help from Rufus, a traveler from the future, where their band is the foundation of a perfect society. With the use of Rufus's time machine, the two boys travel to various points in history, returning with important figures to help them complete their final history presentation. That's Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. <laughs> yes. yes, man, this is like a trip down memory lane. This is... Yeah, it is. Wow, all right. Okay, here's the next one. After his childhood buddy is murdered while visiting Detroit, rebellious cop 
Axel Foley, follows the leads to Beverly Hills, California. He checks in with his old friend Jenny Summers and starts to believe her boss, art dealer Victor Maitland, might somehow be involved in the murder. However, Lieutenant Bogmill of the Beverly Hills Police Department does not trust Foley and hinders his search for evidence. Beverly Hills Cop? Yes, it is. It's Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> you know, you could have just like said, oh, well, it's in Beverly Hills. There was a cop. It's in the 80s. They're just going to name it <laughs> Beverly that's, Hills that Cop. That was where I got that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, there was no other cop movies in Beverly Hills back in the 80s. Anyhow. <laughs> right. Here we go. Here's the next one. Five high school students from different walks of life endure a Saturday detention under a power-hungry principal. The desperate group includes Rebel John, Princess Claire, Outcast Allison, Brainy Brian, and Andrew the Jock. Each has a chance to tell his or her own story, making the others see them a little differently. And when the day ends... They question whether school will ever be the same. That's the breakfast. Part. Yes, very good. Very good. Now, we've come to the very last question. All right. And this okay. is a bonus question. If you had any wrong, uh, this would be uh, able to clear off the board. You'd be able to walk away uh, with billions of points. And this bonus question is worth, get this, 12 billion bonus points. So. 12 billion. <laughs> yeah, so 12 billion on top of the other couple of thousand. I mean, you just lose count, right? So, anyhow, <laughs> so so we're just going to give you this gift card. No, not really. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Bonus question. Down in his luck, private eye Eddie Valiant gets hired by cartoon producer RK Maroon to investigate an adultery scandal involving the sultry wife of Maroon's biggest star. But when Marvin Acme is found murdered, the villainous Judge Doom vows to catch and destroy the prime suspect. That would be who framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, correct, <laughs> correct. Very good job. You walked away with uh, some, some billion points or something like that, and uh, you did a very good job. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you on the show. And um, so, where can people find you? Um, on Twitter at Suzy underscore QZ. And um, on Smule at Suzy QZ. All right. And that's QSI. <laughs> QSI. Correct. All right. And thank you so much for being here on the show. It was an amazing experience. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emmett. I appreciate it. All right. And this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Stay creative and stay captivating, my friends. It's the Emma Blackwell Show, searching the web for the most creative, intriguing, and captivating people in the world.